Great to see you here again. We are starting with the presentations related to Chapter 5, Chapter 5, which is about linear programming. In this first session, I will introduce the principles of linear programming. I will talk about the linear inequalities, about lines, and how we can use the basics from linear inequalities to develop, in fact, linear programming. When we look at linear programming, it's always interesting to have a little view on the background. Now, linear programming is based of, on linear inequalities, and linear inequalities are typically part of college algebra or mathematics when you studied it in courses before, and these are equations of the form ax plus by larger than or equal than c, or ax plus by smaller or equal than c. In here we have the parameters a, b, and c, which are the constants, and x and y are the variables. In our simple uh, example here, I only considered two variables. Now, in real situations, they may be, uh, or there may be more than two variables, it depends. Uh, it can be a finite number of variables, for example, when we look at the makes of cars, handbags, shoes, computers, tasks in a factory, it can be parts that you are using. So basically, the number of variables can be very large, but always finite. Now, the principles of linear inequalities were already discussed and resolved by Fourier in the 19th century. So there is already a solution for it. However, the more practical part of linear programming started in the late 1930s and was in fact continued during and after the Second World War. Now, when we look at the early applications, the first applications were uh, done in business by Leonid Kantorovich in the USSR in 1939. His principle was that in order to evaluate processes, in, in order to evaluate production, um, profit had to be included. And of course, in the communistic Soviet Union, a profit was some capitalistic idea, so it was not really considered to be quite interesting. Now, further on during the war, it was in fact, or linear programming was op uh, used to optimize the losses on the enemy, while keeping the own costs at the minimum. And later on, it's uh, basically at the beginning that it was only a military application. Later on, it was in fact transformed into a business application. And that business application uh, has been developed since the late second part of the 1940s after the Second World War. Now, it's basically during the war time that the simplex method was developed or the early stages of the simplex method was developed. But in fact, it was completed after the Second World War and it offered a lot of very interesting possibilities for applications of linear programming in business. The first quite famous uh, application of linear programming was done with an application in a factory where 70 people had to be allocated to 70 jobs. And this is a type of problem that with a classical approach is not possible to complete it in a reasonable time. However, linear programming provides the possibility to reduce the Calcula calculation time significantly. Basically, when we look at linear programming, the word says linear programming. So we are, in fact, looking back at linear equations, linear properties, and we have to look at the definition of a line. A straight line is, in fact, a line which can be expressed by the equation ax plus by is equal to c, or in the point slope expression as y is mx plus k, in which m is the slope and k is the y-intercept. And you see an example of a line. I always use the similar and the congruent triangles 
to calculate that line, but basically we have a straight line through the points xa, ya, and xb, yb, and we can determine the equation of that line. Now, when we know the parameters a, b, and c, or m and k, we can in fact find the expression of the line, we can draw the line. When we have the two points that are in fact part of a line through which the line passes, we can of course calculate the equation of that line. Now, some of you, it may be interesting to have a quick look where the linear equation comes from, how we find the expression. And we start again with our congruent triangles. And in those congruent or similar triangles, we know that there is a relationship that yb minus ya divided by xb minus xa is equal to y minus ya divided by x minus xa. Now, when we look at those triangles, this is a classical approach, how we can use the similar triangles. And when we take any value x between, or let's say any value of x, we can find a relationship that links x with y. And one of the things that we also have to remember is the definition of the slope. And the slope m is the rise divided by the run. So when we look at the larger triangle, we see that the rise is yb minus ya, the increase of the vertical value, the rise, divided by xb minus xa, the increase of the x value. So basically delta y over delta x. And we see that in our initial equation, yb minus ya divided by xb minus xa is basically equal to the slope. So we can say that the right-hand side m is equal to y minus ya divided by x minus xa. And with some small, simple manipulations, uh, for example, we multiply both sides with x minus xa, then we move x to one side or y to one side and all the other parameters to the other side, which gives us the expression y is mx minus mxa plus ya, and I can write this as y equal mx plus k, with k equal to ya minus mxa. So basically I have the equation, I can determine that equation, and it's based on the linear expressions, the linear equations, that we are going to define the linear inequalities. Let's have a look at the mathematical concept of linear inequalities. We have expressions of the form, the sum of a i x i is smaller than or equal to a constant or larger than or equal to a constant. So basically here we have the a index i are the coefficients, b are the constraints, and x index i are the variables that we are considering. Like I said before, the number of variables can be significant, it can be large, but it always has to be finite. So basically we have all those coefficients and the constraints that we have to consider. So we have to write those formulas, we have to express the different constraints. For example, when we buy a number of products, the total cost has to be smaller or equal to the budget that is available. Now, when we look at typical mathematical calculations, the, value, uh, the parameters can have different values, the solutions can have different values. However, when we look at linear programming, we will see that there are some other conditions that are applicable. Now, another important element is about the inequality we can have the inequality including or excluding the equality, huh? smaller than or smaller than or equal to, larger than or larger than or equal to. Now, when we have the equality included in the inequality, it means that the points on the line, the line itself is included as a part of the solution. If not, then the points on the line 
are not included. Another element which is important to know before we continue is how we can draw the inequality. Now let's consider a two-dimensional linear inequality given by the equation 2x plus 3y smaller or equal than 6. We cannot draw a linear inequality as such, so we have to work in different steps. We have the x and y plane, and step one is in fact we are going to draw the line 3x plus 2y equal to 6, and we do that by first identifying the x and the y intercepts. The x intercept we find by setting y equal to 0, so we find 3x is equal to 6, and for the y intercept we put x equal to 0 and we find 2y is equal to 6. So basically we find the two intercepts which for these equations are 3, 0 and 0, 2. We have two points which are part of the line and in fact now we can draw the line 2x plus 3y equal to 6. The next step is to determine which side complies with the inequality. Is it the part below the line, the half plane below the line or to the left, or the half plane above or to the right. So we plug in the point, the origin, which is very interesting because it's 0, 0. So 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0 is basically equal to 0, which is clearly smaller than 6. So the point 0, 0 is part of the complies with the inequality. So which means that the half plane below or to the left is in fact part of the solution. And we do that for all the different equations. Now consider a general inequality problem where we have four different equations. So we have those four different equations and we limit the number of variables here equal to two. So we can draw it, we can draw it on the paper, we can easily draw it on the screen and we can imagine what it is about. When we have more variables, uh, it's in fact more complex. We cannot imagine it anymore, certainly not when it goes over three variables. Now it's also uh, possible, but uh, we can, like I said, have a finite large number of variables not infinite, it's not possible, it has to be finite, but like we saw before, we already had linear programming problems with 70 variables and 70 equations. Now let's have a look how we put all these things and what we want to identify is what we call the feasibility zone. And the feasibility zone is in fact the zone in which, the zone of pairs for which all inequalities for which all those equations comply. So any point in that zone complies with all the four different linear inequalities. So let's have a look at those four uh, possibilities. We have a red curve, or sorry, a purple curve, and we say that the feasible zone for this, or the zone that complies with the condition is in fact below and we color that in purple. Now we have an orange line with the zone above and we already see that there is an overlap. So basically that overlapping zone, that zone to the left between the purple and the orange curve, all those pairs within that zone comply with the two inequalities. We continue with the green zone, we color it again, and finally we find the red line. And basically you see in the middle that there is a darker zone, and that darker zone is what we call the feasibility zone. All the pairs within that zone comply with all four constraints at the same time. And we can draw it in a different way which is in fact shown here, where we have a feasibility zone, the green zone. This is the only zone that we in basically have to know. And we also have to see that any point of the borders is a part of the feasibility zone, 
as long as the inequalities contain the equal sign. Basically, this is what I wanted to tell you before starting with linear programming on itself. It's very important just to understand how we get the linear equation, how we get the linear inequality, and how we draw those linear inequalities, and finally determine the feasibility zone. The next video will be more about the basic assumptions and the equations that we have to define to get a linear programming problem. Basically, we're going to identify what is the specific or what are the specific conditions that we have to comply with in order to consider a problem solvable using linear programming. So this is an interesting chapter. I hope you will learn a lot. It may be a little bit more complicated because of the higher level of mathematics that we have here, but I'm sure you will get through it without too many problems. Anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next presentation. Thank you and bye-bye. <laughs>